Well, I want to thank Pastor Dylan. He did give me extra time, so I want to thank him for being short and coming and doing it. I'd also uh, like to be kind and loving to him. Um, Our young guys do not feel like I understand technology very well. They sometimes call me boomer, but I do understand it well enough that we ought to encourage Pastor Dylan right now. If you'll take your phone while you watch this, you can do it for just a second um, and that, but if you'll take your phone right now and go to the church his website. His little picture is going to pop up, and I just want you to say, hi, good job. And then I want you to close it out, and I want you to say, hi, good job. And I want you to do that 10 times. And if everybody right now will do that for me, that would be a huge blessing to encourage him. I don't want to throw pot shots. I don't want to be horribly mean. I just want to encourage him. So if everybody right now will jump onto the church's website and do your best to wish him uh, that he did such a good job so many times that it'll crash the site, that would be awesome. All right. So now, if you take your Bibles and go to two places, if you go to Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, verse 30, stick your, um, and then go to James chapter 3, stick your finger in there, we're going to start at Mark chapter 12, and we're talking about um, family communication here, communication in the family. You know, um, it's interesting, but communication makes the world go round. You look at any place that you have communication, you have either good communication or bad communication, and it decides how that event, how that organization, how everything functions. One of the things in this day and age is communication has gotten lighter between personal communication because we have so much wired communication. And why we have been separated from so many different people during this time and have less. In our families, we've had almost more. I have had the privilege of doing quite a bit of phone counseling lately about families who aren't used to hanging around each other. I had a teenager recently tell me, he said, Pastor Scott, uh, it was amazing. He said, the other, other day we sat down as a family and all sat at the same table and ate dinner together. Whoa. He then, interesting, said, he said, it was a miracle. We haven't done that in years. And he said, we survived. We didn't kill each other. And then he said, after it, he said, you know, I really enjoyed sitting down with my family and just talking. Now, Pastor Howell, that's sad that that was an unusual experience. But unfortunately, in this busy day and age, we get to where everybody eats at different times. Everybody is communicating at different times. And uh, But to come together as a family and have family communication, it was unusual. Communication is so important that businesses that succeed are because they teach good communication. Both of my children um, had the privilege of working at Chick-fil-A. And they spent a large amount of time teaching um, them how to communicate properly with uh, people. If you say to somebody at Chick-fil-A, thank you, what do they say back to you? My pleasure. Now, I will tell you, my kids drove me up a wall when they worked at Chick-fil-A. Because they would say, my pleasure, constantly. And they would even get frustrated with themselves. They said, my pleasure, so much when they worked at Chick-fil-A. Because they were trained to communicate in that light. My daughter was a team lead for Chick-fil-A. And she was trained how to handle uh, tough situations. How to handle ornery customers. How to handle uh, when somebody wasn't happy. And how to make them happy. Consequently, I love to go to Chick-fil-A because I just like the way they treat me. You know, if I have a choice to go to Chick-fil-A or someplace else, yes, I love their waffle fries. I love their grilled chicken nuggets, their their uh, lemonades and their frosted lemonades. It's all good. But on better than any of that is customer service. At uh, Christmas, I was sitting at a Chick-fil-A with my brother uh, all, a couple of my brothers and their families, and we were eating, and my brother's order got a little messed up, but it, it was crowded. I mean, the place was standing room only. There was about 100 people in line, and it was just going crazy. And all of a sudden, the guy walked up and said, how y'all doing? 
We said, good. And he said, I'm the uh, director of customer experience for Chick-fil-A. He said, are you having a great experience today? And my brother said, well, they messed up my order a little bit. The next thing you know, that gentleman was throwing free food all over our table. You know what? He had good communication. Now, you, you say you have a problem at places like McDonald's. They'll throw something at you. All right, but not free food. You know, we have to understand that in our families, we have to have the right communication. So if you look with me in Mark chapter 12, it's, we're going to start with the biblical truths here and then get to some practical things. In Mark chapter 12, let's see here, verse 30, the Bible says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Lord, I pray that you God and direct us. Help us as we seek you. Lord, we need you in a great way. Lord, I pray that we focus on your word and your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. As we see here, he gives us two commandments. Do you remember when um, Brother Sam Davison was preaching? He told us about our communi- communication with the warp and the woof about two years ago. And he talked, it kept going like this, the warp and the woof. And he was talking about that. And he was talking about our communication with God and our communication with man. My communication is best when it is in right balance with God and man. When I'm taking and I am walking with God and I am loving my God and I am walking in the Spirit, then it is much easier for me to communicate with man. But when I am led by my own flesh and my own spirit and in my own ways, then I have struggles. Understand that the key to good communication is starting the right communication with you with your God and having two-way communication with God to where you're listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing Him to guide and direct your steps. And that starts with, I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my heart. I'm going to take and say, God, I love you and I want to be led by you and not myself. You see, when I'm led by myself, I get ornery. When I'm led by by myself, I take and I want to force an agenda. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I have to take and allow myself to realize that most important is my relationship and communication with God. You say, well, Pastor Scott, I, I read my Bible every day. But the question is, do you apply it and do you communicate with God to where you allow the word of God to be a light and a lamp unto your feet and your path and guide him where, where you're supposed to go? Or do you take and you try to do what you want to do? And the fact is, if we love God, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And we're going to allow him to guide and direct our steps. The second thing in the biblical truth is my communication struggles, my communication struggles when it is led by the flesh. Take your Bibles, flip over to James chapter 3. This is a great passage. If we took the entire passage and meditated on it for weeks, it would change our communication. And we could spend weeks and weeks walking through that. In fact, I think I could take this entire lesson and teach it every Wednesday night for six weeks. There's so much truth in James chapter 3 of how we're supposed to communicate. But if we look here in verse 14, it says, But if you have better envy than strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. What powerful words. It's earthly, sensual, and devilish when we have the wrong communication. It says, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Because we're um, crunched on time, I'm not going to break it down. But if you go in and you look at the roots of these words, both envy and strife, we're going to see that it's more of a mind frame. 
Envy is like a strong agenda of me trying to accomplish something. Strife is contention for a position. It actually is a Greek root that is talking about trying to um, uh, banter or win an election. And so we get ourselves in trouble when we take and we're being led by our flesh to accomplish an agenda. Uh, some of you may have known me back when I was young and known that when I first came here, I, will, I struggled a lot with my anger. I struggled a lot with battling in communication. I, I fought all the time, but that's the way I was raised. That's why I was trained, and I did it all in the name of God. I got to get this done. And I was very much convicted by my Anger. I was very convicted way I communicated, but I struggled changing it. Brother Van Gelderen was here preaching, and he talked about this agenda idea a little bit. He talked about expectations. Uh, preacher says something, uh, Pastor Lett says something similar to, uh, he who expects nothing is seldom disappointed. You know, the fact was, what as Brother Van Gelden preached, I was convicted that the reason I got angry all the time, the reason I struggled in my communication, was I always had expectations for people. You know what that was? It was led by my spirit. It was led by my flesh. And so my communication struggled because I had an agenda. I had envy and I, I was trying to accomplish certain things. Did you know God doesn't need me to accomplish his will? He doesn't need my force. He doesn't need my anger. He doesn't need my directive. God can get along without me. Did you know that? And I had to realize that in my communication that so much is be still and know that he is God. And I had to sit back and allow him to direct me. So therefore, I couldn't have strife. I didn't need to push to get to the top so I could accomplish God's will. I needed to... Be still. So how do I do that? I'm glad you asked in verse 17. It says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown of peace of them that make peace. We see here he gives us a list. And I, I challenge you, go back through and study these things. But he's pure, peaceable, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You know, it's interesting, but most of the time when we have an agenda, it's not pure, it's not peaceable, it's not easy to be entreated. Uh, I, I like to convince somebody with a big two by four. I don't know about you. Maybe you're not fleshly. Maybe you're not uh, trying to get your agenda across. But I, I sometimes just want to take a two by four, smack it, some sense into somebody's head. But that's not being led by the spirit. The wisdom from above, my communication flourishes when it is run by wisdom from above. And it is first pure. And then peaceable, easy to be entreated or accepted that when I present something, it can be presented in a much better way. When I was going through this battle of communication and learning to communicate with others better, I would often get frustrated because I couldn't figure out how do I be easy to be entreated. And it always uh, was intriguing to me because both Pastor Willette and Pastor Howell i go to them and say, I want to take a two by four and smack this person over the head. And they'd say, or you could say it this way. And I was like, yeah, that's much easier to be entreated. Why don't you pause and ask the Holy Spirit, how could I say this better? Why don't you pause and say, Lord, well, what do I need to do? You say, well, I can't. I, I'm not here in the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to do. Then call somebody with more biblical wisdom than you and say, I want to kill somebody. How do I say it better? <laughs> I, I want to attack somebody. What do I do here? You know, did you know that not everything has to be done today? Not everything has to be driven. Full of mercy. Anybody ever give you mercy? How about God when he sent his son Jesus to die for you? We can give mercy to the other. Good fruits. 
You know, we need to take in our mind frame from a biblical perspective and understand that God doesn't want us to walk around with that proverbial two by four. And he doesn't want us going around and trying to accomplish his will by beating everybody up. He wants us to have wisdom from above. He wants us to be pure, peaceable, easy to be entreated. So we have to take and humble ourselves before God and say, I don't want to have envy and in strife. I want to be pure and peaceable. So what's some practical application that we can put to it? First, try to understand rather than to be understood. Try to understand somebody rather than to be understood. Most of the time when you are bantering back and forth and communicating with people, you're trying to be understood. When I am parenting my children and I'm trying to be understood rather than trying to understand them, we don't get very far. We don't get accomplish very many things. So we have to sit back and say, okay, how... What does my child need? What does my wife need? What does my husband need? And understand where they're coming from. But a lot of times we cannot understand where they're coming from because we're trying to be understood. We're trying to push an agenda. We're trying to drive a point. I even found in the early days of my counseling that I had a game plan and this is the biblical truth you need. And I'd spend the entire time with somebody in my office trying to slam that biblical truth into their heads and not accomplish anything. But if I'd sit back and I'd listen listen and understand the battles that they were fighting, then what would happen is everything would change because they felt understood and then I could help them. Number, the second thing here, B, recognize there are multiple points of view. Recognize there is always multiple points of view. It's interesting, but if you ever could, you can look online and see. But it's neat to see somebody who takes a picture of something and they take a circle and take pictures of the same shot, but from multiple views. You know, it looks totally different. And we have to understand that often somebody's not lying. Somebody doesn't need to be convinced of something else. It's just they have a different point of view that they're looking from. This was hard for me to accept. But did you know sometimes that my wife has a point of view that is wiser than mine? Hmm. Sometimes my children have a point of view that is wiser than mine. You know, I can't stand it when my kids are smarter than I am. But they are sometimes. You know, everybody has a different point of view, but we can't know what their point of view is if we're trying to be understood rather than understanding. The third thing here is accept people based on their strengths, not their weaknesses. Accept people based on their strengths, not their weaknesses. If I take and I'm dealing with somebody, I might want to focus on all their stupidity, all their ignorance, all their struggles that they have. Or I can look and see a good nugget. When I was going through these battles of learning to communicate better, and I still go through those battles some, Pastor Ouellette used to drive me up a wall. You say, why? Because I'd be in trying to convince him that somebody was just plum rotten and he'd always come up with something good about the person. You know, but the fact is it taught me to always look for that positive trait. Always look for that strength in the midst of that weakness and it helps me communicate better when I can focus on somebody's strengths rather than their weakness. D, Find common points of ground to connect with people. I will tell you, in your family, with your children, you need to find common points to be able to connect with. And it it shouldn't be you trying to convince your children that they need to have your loves. You need to find things that your children love and then learn to love them. Because if you connect with things with your kids, you'll be amazed at what happens. Now, in my family, praise the Lord, all my kids have one love that I have, and we all share the same love of food and cooking. And that's something that we can all have in common. But uh, my son Jordan, uh, he's a self-proclaimed nerd and loves computers and nerdy things. 
I try to put my inner nerd on when I communicate with him and try to succeed with that. I don't do super well at that, but I try to learn those computer things and do that. Uh, you know, my son, uh, Austin, he loves sports. We love talking about sports and love talking about basketball. We're very sad when March Madness didn't happen. But that's something that we have that we communicate on. Um, I did not watch a lot of basketball until he started really liking it. But it was something that we connected on. So find common points of ground. When you're dealing with other people, find common points of ground. Lastly, look for ways to invest in others. You, as pastor has taught us for many years, you're going to make uh, withdrawals out of the bank of goodwill, so make investments. Always be looking, how can I invest in others? How can I be a benefit to others? How can I help others? And you make those investments, you never know when uh, you're going to need that person or you're going to need to communicate something in a good way. And by having pre-made those investments, it helps you with communication. With your wife, always be looking for ways to invest. With your husband, be looking for ways to invest. With your children, always find their loves and try to invest in them. It will come back in dividends as you need to communicate. Lord, we sure do love you. I pray that you guide and direct us now. Give us wisdom as we work to be godly communicators with our family. In Jesus' name, amen.